Hey guys, how's it going? Today I prepared a little bit of an experimental video about MIDI drums. I think this is a topic that nobody mentioned before and recently it just drove me crazy because I tried to process my MIDI drums and the weird thing happened that the EQ and the, the compressor and limiter and clipper just always behaved a little bit different every single time when I played back the audio. So this is the result with my little experiment. So as you may know, there are different um, MIDI drum plugins. Some of them are, you are using the contact player. Others have their own dedicated host, like the SSD5 Slate Drums and the Easy Drummer 3. Okay, the issue I noticed that every single time I play the drums back, something is different. The, the limiter and the clipper, especially in the dynamic uh, processing, it just behaves very differently. And I just wanted to experiment. This is what it sounds like, the cream drums, when I hit play. Sounds normal, right? Okay, as we know, if we duplicate the same track and we flip the phase, they should cancel each other out which means there should be no sound coming from the speakers, right? Right, let's see. I'm going to duplicate the tracks. So the same MIDI, the same velocity, everything is the same. The same preset on the drum plugin, everything is the same. Let's flip the phase. What the f Let's hit again. Completely different. Let's hit again. Again, a completely different result, which means every single time I hit stop and play, the drums are playing back in a different dynamic level. And also the frequency curve, the frequency response, the EQ is going to be different, right? So how can I process my drums accurately? How can I find the sweet spot for the compressor, the limiter, the clipper, and the EQ if the drums are always changing every single time when I play them back? And it just drove me mad. Some might say, yeah, it's maybe because, you know, this plugin and other plugins, they use a third-party host, like the contact player. Okay, let's experiment with that. And here is the slate drums. This is the VST, there is no third party plugin or host to load this, right? Okay, watch what happens. Same thing, so this is what it sounds like. Okay, let's flip the phase on the duplicated track. Let's hit again the play. It's again a completely different sound, different velocity, different dynamics, and EQ curve. Obviously, because I can hear it. And we are not talking about half a dB difference. It's fing audible. Look at this, this is the meter. Are you kidding? All right, you might say, hmm, maybe the reason for that, it's maybe Reaper, or it's maybe the latency I have because I use 160 samples, or maybe it's the bitrate, maybe it's, you know, it's because it's 48 kilohertz instead of 44.1, or whatever. All right, that might be. So how do you explain this then? We have Easy Drummer 3. This is what it sounds like. Okay, let's duplicate. Let's flip the phase. It's a silent. There is no sound. Let's hit again. Nothing. Maybe third time the charm? No. 
there is nothing coming out. Tune track with Easy Dumber 3, they got it right. So whatever happens, every single time when you hit stop and play, they are going to play back the same velocity and the same EQ response, the EQ curve, frequency curves, every single time, no matter what. What is the practical takeaway from this experiment, right? Am I saying that the other plugins are shit or, or they are bad or wrong or something? No, no, not at all. What I'm saying is, if you want accurate processing every single time, then you need something that is consistent, right? You cannot just EQ, especially, you cannot apply dynamic processing like compressor, limiter, clipper on a source that is always changing when you stop and play it back again and stop and playing back again, and it's always different. You, you, you cannot nail the sweet spot if the source constantly changing. This is what I'm trying to say. And you know, somebody may say, oh yeah, but it just shows that the previous two plugins, uh, the Crim drums and the Slate drums, are actually, they are not static. They are dynamic, right? Like a live performance. That's why it's different. Okay, then think about this. You are in the studio recording a drummer and you had the best take ever. Everything was spot on. The levels are spot on. It just sounds great. The balance between the drums are amazing. And you had the take, you recorded it. You finished all the recording session, guitars, bass, vocals, everything is done. And you sit down and start mixing. Do you think that those drum recordings are going to change every single time when you hit stop and play? Or they are going to be the same? Yeah, because this is a real recording. And you get the same result from the Easy Drummer. What is the solution for this problem? The best thing what you can do is always before you start any kind of processing on your drums, MIDI drums, make sure you render them, you print them. Like a all over picture of the drums. But you can do the same thing when you root it out, the individual tracks with your kick, with your snare, toms, spot mics, overhead, room, etc., etc. Especially in that case, it's very important. When you have individual tracks, like, I don't know, 10, 12, 14 different microphones capturing different parts of the drum kit, in this case a MIDI, but you print it out for the individual channels, and if those channels are constantly changing, it's going to be a complete mess. So how do you want to mix your kick drum if it's always, I don't know, 3, 3 dB louder or 2 dB quieter? How do you put the compressor on it? Or if it's changing the frequency, right? How do you want to EQ it accurately? Not talking about even clipper and limiter and stuff, because every single time when you hit play, those settings are going to be thrown out of the window. It's not relevant anymore, right? So this is the solution, what you can do. You always print your drums, and when you duplicate it and flip the phase or polarity, it's going to sound like this. Nothing the same as it was with the Easy Drummer 3. So this was just a quick experiment, a quick explanation, and kind of a quick tip how you should start dealing and processing your MIDI drums. Make sure you, you print your drums out and you start processing like this because in this way it's always going to give you the same stable result. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new and see you in the next one. Take care.